Hi, this is Dan Coffin, owner of SPNC Corp and certified professional agronomist. And this topic is going to be one that's of interest to, in some cases, a very few people. It's soy starter, soybean starter. Uh, and how many of us have actually opted to put on a starter system on our 15 inch row planters? Because it's time consuming, uh, it seems fairly pricey. And it's something that um, very few people have actually dipped their toe in to begin to try. Uh, many who have done it in the past have gone back to their 30 inch row planters that they've set up for corn and said, well, we'll try this uh, on the 30 inch rows or maybe we'll go back and split the middles and see. Um, but there are more and more people all the time looking into soy starters because they have a, a, a pretty good indication that maybe there may be value there. And truthfully, there is. However, you have to be aware that when you go to soy starters, and I have I have had people test soy starters for you know 20 of the 25 years that we've been doing things in business, and lots and lots of NP and K in a soybean starter does not pay. I've probably only seen one or two instances through the years where lots and lots of soy starter uh, paid with NPK. And that was mainly because uh, if they had starter on that soybean, if the beans came out of the ground fairly rapidly, uh, it beat a rain event, which should probably beat the soil down, caused it to crust and the beans uh, just couldn't emerge. And so it saved the stand. Uh, now, so with the improvement in time that the beans were out there actually growing, um, the fact that they were out of the ground and the stand was established, certainly it paid because it bought, you know, another week, uh, 10 days or two weeks of, of uh, consistent growth when everything had to be started all over again and replanted. The other thing you'll see is if you put too much NP and K in in soybeans, those beans come out of the ground. Um, they stretch really rapidly. They are nice and green. They are pretty. They're deep, dark color. And they're very tall because uh, they've got more nitrogen than they've seen probably in years. And so they tend to stretch and get very lanky uh, as they come out of the ground. Uh, but boy, they are pretty. But at the end of the season, that prettiness has to pay off. And oftentimes uh, that is not the case. And when you get them too tall too early, they are more susceptible uh, to other things that can you know, bend or knock them over. Uh, they aren't quite as uh, substantial uh, in their base as you would normally expect. And so they are, uh, in a sense, sensitive to the wind. So be careful. So if that's the case, then what do we put in the soy starter? Well, what you'll find is because the beans are, are very biologically oriented because of the nodulation that we see on the roots and, and beans are dependent upon, you know, their biology. We have biology, we have carbon sources uh, in, the, in, the, in the material to be able to help those root masses find the energy that they want. And so when they're very young, when, with all of this carbon around, they are putting on very, very large root, root masses underneath that soil. And the number one thing that people tell us is, wow, when we look at these plants, they're coming out of the ground, they do have good color um, because we can throw a little bit of stuff in there um, for nitrogen that does not upset the apple cart for them. Um, never put any nitrate in a starter if you can avoid it because the nitrate is going to be a blocker to uh, nodulation. It's the chemical that actually says to the soybean, you don't need nodules. So any nitrate that's in there would be a no-no. Any amine form or ammonium forms or even urea forms in small quantities are, are perfectly fine, but you gotta be careful with urea because urea is gonna burn those, those beans if you get too much. So we create a starter that has biology, it has micronutrients, it has uh, lots of carbon, it has uh, several different things to help it manage stress, get it out of the ground, make it solid, and uh, the biggest thing is what we see is uh, the nodulation is improved. And again, as I mentioned in other videos, the, the very young beans themselves, as they're stretching their necks or get cotyledons out or the very first set of leaves, they've already got a really nice nodulation package started on them at that point. And oftentimes people tell us, well, we don't see nodules up sometimes up until June. Well, that's because we've got probably lots of nitrate left around from the corn crop if it's in rotation. Uh, from the year before and that nitrate blocks those those systems so you know until it gets washed down or it gets sucked up and the plants outgrow it <clears throat> and pull all the nitrates out that's the blocker so soy starter is something that uh, we've found very good results with for two reasons one is the the product itself the way it's created helps those beans do a better job of growth the other thing is you're going to need in a 15 inch row you're going to need a minimum of probably six total gallons of product um, and if you get eight, that's great. But most people tell us, well, 
what's the soy starter rate? Well, probably one to two gallons of the actual soil starter, soy starter is all you need. The rest of that has to be water. And one of the reasons that we're having success is people are choosing to plant less and less seed all the time. But in the back of their mind, they're worried in all those years that they've talked to them, uh, either for themselves or they've talked to their, their um, the previous generations and said, be careful when you drop the soybean uh, population. Um, if they don't come up, you're going to be replanting. Well, one of the interesting things about soy is soybeans are what we call hygroscopic. They, they're water loving. And when they find water, they slurp it in. So that's one of the reasons you have to be careful with fertilizer. If you put water out there with fertilizer in it, they're slurping in the water and they're bringing in the fertilizer. And if it gets bone dry uh, or there's a different differentiation in the furrow as you plant where you got wet and dry, wet and dry, they'll suck in the fertilizer and the fertilizer can kill them because they're very, very sensitive to salts. But when we put water with carbon based materials in there, what happens is there's enough water to actually get those beans to start the germination process. And if we're at the right time of the year and the soil is not dry in the profile, you're not far from water when you put those beans down into moisture. So the water will help those beans immediately germinate. The root goes down, it gets into the moisture and the, the bean germination effect is, is successful. So with people that want to plant 120,000 uh, to get 110 or 100 or more, they don't have any difficulty with that. And that's one of the number one things that we've uh, we found from people telling us that they never realized that that water was enough to get the job started. And so by the time you actually put the water out there and you put a little soy starter with it, the way that soybean starts off is entirely different than if you just put a seed treatment on there, put it out there, put it in dry dirt, wait for rain. Of course, we're not purposefully putting it in a dry dirt. That just happens from time to time. At least I hope you're not doing that. So the whole process of soy starter is something new for most people. Uh, there are people now that are going to 15 inch wheat because now they can be doing things in 15 inch wheat with those, with those uh, bean planters that are set up that way and, and testing 15 inch wheat. And a lot of people are finding that they can be successful even with 15 inch wheat when they can use starter programs in, in association with it. So consider soy starter as a part of uh, your development process in in uh in agriculture uh we always treat beans um kind of as the the fix-all because we don't have to spend much money but realize that a soybean time by the time soybean by the time it is three leaves tall has already determined um the total number of uh, nodes it's going to have just like corn is determining the total rows around and, and length long by v3 it's determined the total number of the nodes it's going to set and if it has a higher energy level uh, enough boron and some other things in there, it's going to set a lot of nodes. And by V5, it's determined the total number of pods it's going to have. So again, we understand that early programming and priming of these plants is extremely important. Um, so if you've been finding yourself at a plateau of yields, uh, maybe this is the one thing that can kick you over the top. So if you have interest in soy starter, um, what we can do to provide you a program, please call us here at uh, area code 260 478 8080 and one of our salespeople or myself will, will be in touch with you to help you understand it or you can always begin to check out some of these products and uh, online we'll find uh, this catalog which has our products in it you'll find it in an electronic form and you can uh, you can see surge soy starter there in uh, in, in the book itself for an understanding of uh, a little bit of, of how that information is is developing so at spnc uh, spnc corp is uh, our email, I'm sorry, our uh, website, uh, www.spnccorp, two C's in the middle there. And uh, if you want to leave a message for us to get a hold of you, that would be fine.